Hello, so I'm going to do that whole goth tag thing. Um, first, let me start off by saying that I have never officially identified as a goth. Um, I've never labeled myself anything. I think that when you label yourself something, you put limitations on yourself and you give other people expectations and um, they limit you. So I've never considered myself really a goth because to me, um, goth is a very sort of specific -y sort of thing and I've never felt that I really thoroughly fit into that genre. Um, and I'll get more into that later. So, with that in mind, I will answer these questions. How long have you been a goth? So, I first started um, getting into darker stuff in like 88, 89, around that time period when I was in high school. Um, again, I never really thought of myself as a goth, but, you know, darker inclined, I guess. I always sort of liked vampires, and uh, but I, a lot of people that aren't goths like vampires, so um, yeah, I... I guess back in the late 80s was when I first started drifting musically towards darker stuff. Um, and how was I introduced to goth? Well, I, was, I wasn't really a huge music fan. Like, I mean, I liked music, obviously, but I wasn't like obsessive about music. Um, I was listening to like Queen and... Um, Queen was a big one that I was into, and then uh, my cousin Karen sent me a Circle Jerks tape, and so then I was like getting into Circle Jerks, and then I heard Love Song by The Cure, and that really, truly changed my life, um, so I would say, I mean, I, and I'm a late bloomer, like, from that era, I'm kind of a late bloomer, so Disintegration was really the first thing that... Um, motivated me towards darker sounding music. So that would have been like, what, 88, 89-ish, um, senior in high school. And that kind of opened the door towards other bands, like Suzy and the Banshees, Bauhaus, um, you know, Depeche Mode and all that stuff. But yeah, again, back then we didn't call ourselves goths because that really wasn't a scene especially not northeast Ohio, like rural Ohio where I was from, there was definitely no scene. Um, Kent State area, you know, around the college there were people, but it was more just like punks and we all kind of, like, I never viewed it as different genres. It was just like all the people who were sort of into like alternative music, whether it was punk or, you know, The Smiths, The Cure, all that stuff, we all kind of just hung out together because, girls, stop, always. Um, yeah, we all just kind of hung out together because there weren't a lot of alternative people around, so we all just kind of drifted towards each other. And I really didn't become aware of goth as a genre um, until later when I met some other people that were more into that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? Gothic subgenre would you put yourself in? Again, I don't like to limit myself, but I guess if I had to pick one, it would be post-punk, which is not a genre of goth. Um, dark wave, which I don't think people usually um, use as a subgenre of goth, which I'm kind of confused by because the whole dark wave scene was pretty big in the 90s, um, and Lycia was part, definitely a part of that. Um, one of our frustrations was um, being mislabeled. I think the dark wave label was pretty accurate, but when you start calling it goth, that was definitely not um, accurate for Lycia. What do I? Oh, what do you believe to be the basis of the gothic subculture? For me, goth was more like the death rocky kind of um really kind of vampy like christian death um uh all those kind of bands that were more like 
spooky. Curse and Death wasn't spooky, but you know what I mean. Like um, the vampire sort of stuff and the um, like people that actually kind of gravitated and called themselves goths. Um, like I was more from the post-punk thing of like The Cure, Bauhaus, Depeche Mode, Susie and the Banshees, Joy Division, and those bands. So we didn't really call them goth. And I still don't call them goth. Just because goths like something doesn't make it goth um, to me. So, um, I mean, that's obviously where it sort of stemmed from. And then the punk stuff and people took it and kind of morphed it into more of like what you kind of traditionally see as goth now. And I literally have no clue what goes on um, now with the scene um since i'm not really in in it so much um i have a lot of friends who identify themselves as goths obviously and i'm darkly inclined clearly but i don't really know what goes on like i don't know what people consider like scientifically gothic because it never really applied to me because i didn't really i was never into the sort of like cobweb spiders and coffins and all of that like stuff I guess I mean I'm not I like it but it's hard to it's hard to explain because there is a different differentiation um but whatever um so I, I mean all those bands kind of stemmed from that post-punk scene and then they kind of t took it in a more spook like the damned and stuff took it in a more traditionally goth, I guess, vein. Um, what do I dislike about being goth? One thing I really don't like about the goth scene is that it's very elitist. And I saw this a lot when Lycia used to tour. Um, we were told by our label, because we fought the goth tag all the time, because it, it's not accurate. It really was not accurate. We made moody, introspective music about like deeply personal issues and... Um, things like, um, you know, <laughs> string theory <laughs> and like, you know, the way a place makes you feel and seeps into your bones and we weren't about cobwebs and coffins and skulls and, you know, things like that. So it was always kind of like, you could see the disappointment when we would be, um, scheduled to play some goth night we would show up and I mean I, I'm more gothy looking obviously than Mike is Mike is like especially I mean Mike looks n completely normal now and back when we were touring he looked like he should be in like a country band or like Skinner you know he had long straggly hair and a beard a lot of the times and wore jeans and you know cowboy boots and whatever so we would come into these goth nights and there was a noticeable elitism and a lot of times people like didn't know who we were or whatever and we would get these looks like what are you even doing here and, and stuff like that and like people being straight up dismissive and rude which I would never be towards anybody ever anyway let alone to the band I paid to come and watch. Um, and so then we would get on stage and sometimes you would visibly see people like, sh like, oh, yikes, I'm sorry, you know, they realized they had just been rude to the band they paid money to watch. And, you know, Mike has stories about this too, where this girl had been writing, this was before we met, um, this girl had been writing him and they were, you know, connecting through writing letters. This was back before the days of the internet. And he did this meet and greet and... <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but there was another guy in the scene that was sitting at the, the table with him because they were friends, and he was very overtly goth. So this girl who he had been corresponding with comes up and starts talking to this guy as if it's Mike, and he's like, oh, that's Mike. The girl was noticeably, like, crestfallen and never spoke to him again, all based on looks. Like, this was the same man who wrote this music that you were so connected to, Yet you see him and he doesn't look like Roz Williams or whoever, and that was it for her. So I really can't stand that elitism. And I saw it so much, like so much. And even with like 
the black people that would show up to our shows, and they were goth, you know, but they weren't, they didn't fit the stereotype. Or the kid that was just a music fan who looked like wearing a t-shirt and a pair of jeans, or some of the metal people that we would have come to our shows. Like, it was very noticeable that they were ostracized. So I really have a problem with that because I don't judge people based on looks. I don't judge people based on what they like, what they look like, what they want to listen to. I base, I base my judgment on people toward, on how they treat me. And so that was always really disappointing for us. But we were told by the label, well, goths like you, so that, so that makes you goth. But it was terribly dismissive. And, you know, since those days, I've talked to so many people who were like, well, I never bothered listening to Lycia because I thought you were just a dumb goth band. And that's no offense towards goths, but that's not what Lycia was. So it was really very frustrating for us, and I feel like it was very limiting because people just don't take that cartoonish aspect of goths seriously besides goths. So it was really frustrating. So that was like... Really, I cannot stand elitism in any way, shape, or form. I can't stand snobs. I can't stand anything like that. No one person is any better than anyone else. That's the one reason why you'll never hear me use the word fans, because I find it's divisive. Like, the person's up here and the fans are down here, and to me it's equal, 100% equal. I don't find a musician any more important than the person that cleans toilets or a doctor or whatever. You just have a different skill set, and... So that's my attitude towards it. So yeah, that was really the thing that always irked me about the goth scene. And it was very prevalent and very obvious. If you don't fit their mold, you don't belong. And I don't like that at all. What do your parents think of it? Well, at 44 years old, my parents don't have an opinion and don't care. Um, but I will say back in like 1990 when I shaved my head and did all of that stuff, you know, it was, especially back in that day in r rural Ohio, it was a big deal. Like, it wasn't normal. It wasn't, you didn't see it every day. So, um, definitely treated differently. My parents weren't so much bad about it, but, like, the world in general at that time in that area was very, I mean, we were threatened to be beaten up all the time. You go into a store and people would follow you, assuming that you're going to steal. I remember in high school, um, there was this list of supposed Satanists and like apparently my name was like number one. I've never, you know, obviously I don't worship Satan, that's retarded. And um, I don't do drugs, I've never been drunk in my life, I've never even drank a, an entire can of beer, like I've tasted beer maybe four times. So just ridiculous assumptions like that it, back then and, and even now probably, you know, the assumption was that you're a slut or, you know, this kind of thing. My parents really weren't so much like, my mom not at all. Um, my dad had a little bit more of an issue with it because I think more because his friends had an issue with it. So, but yeah, for the most part, my parents were like, whatever. I'm a good person and they know that. So, and at 44, it's irrelevant. Eyebrows or no eyebrows? Uh, well, I've currently got them. Um, I have shaved them off, off numerous times. I'm like, eyebrows, yes. They're great. They grow there. They do their thing of keeping dirt out of your eyes. <laughs> That's what they're for, right? Um, yes or no, pro either way, I guess. What a random, strange question. Do what you want with your eyebrows, whatever. Um... What is your favorite band? It's hard to say, like, a favorite because I like so many different kinds of things. Um, I mean, The Cure is always going to be a favorite because it's the, really the, one of the bands that changed my life. Um, Lycia, the same thing. When I heard Lycia, it changed my life, obviously. So some of the bands that I've been into, into through the years, um, The Cure, Susie Banshee's Bauhaus, Joy Division, um, I really liked um, Current 93, 